Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests would be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen at some of the people that will be here. The Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young. We're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome. And all the speakers are wonderful. And just come, 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 join us, and you will be blessed. Well, bless you. I am Pastor Frank Ray, pastor of the New Salem Church, uh, president of the God is Good Ministry. Welcome to In the Beginning. Uh, we're certainly honored and delighted to have you to share with us again in this audition here as we sit with some of the great men of God across the nation. I appreciate you so much for your support for the ministry and what you've done and how you've kept up with us how you've been in prayer with us and our church and our church ministry. We thank God for you. One of the joys of my heart is to be able to sit down with men of God and especially men of God that came out of the ministry of the New Salem Church family. Uh, we've had a privilege of laying our hands on over a hundred men that have come out of our church to preach the unsearchable richness of the kingdom of God. God has allowed us to have some great preachers with great minds that came through our church, that actually blessed our church, and they're now pastoring their own church, and they're in charge of their own ministry. And I thank God for them. We have sitting with us now Bishop uh, Charles Barnes uh, of the New Wine International Church. Uh, we're delighted to have him here to share with us today, and we thank God for this, our brother, that have come by to spend a few moments with us. Uh, Bishop, we're so delighted to have you uh, to share with us. Thank you so much yes. for coming by and sharing with us. Uh, good good day. How are you? I'm grateful, Pastor. So, so glad you have me on your show today. Thank you so much. You are a traveling preacher, traveling evangelist. Uh, you're preaching across the country. And a, you're gifted. I mean, a dynamic preacher of the Word of God. You know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, you're a tremendous singer, a great pastor, a great builder. My goodness, God has laid his hands on you in so many marvelous ways. And we want to thank you for your presence in this house. God bless you. Bless you, Pastor. I had watched you from a baby. Matter of fact, I prophesied your life before you got here. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I hold myself accountable uh, partially for you being here. For I used to work with your mother. Yes, sir. Uh, used to work with her years ago before you was born. And I remembered like it was yesterday. She came and said she wasn't feeling good. <laughs> and I said to her then what was going on. And lo and behold, nine months later, you showed up. Yes, and you're sir. doing an outstanding job. Tell me about what's going on in your life and the life of the ministry. First of all, again, let me say thank you, Dr. Ray, for uh, having me on the show on this edition of In the Beginning. Uh, thank you for all the wonderful things you said. But I really want to just catapult uh, as we segue into this conversation that all that couldn't have been possible, uh, the things that you mentioned about me, without having a good model to follow. 
and which makes the conference so important, the expository conference that you are having for this side of the nation and for people to come from different places, you have to have a model. You have to have something to follow. And because of uh, watching you and setting under your ministry all these years, I went on to, you opened up many doors for me, and expository preaching did that. It helped me see what I did not see in the infant stages of my ministry. Yeah. And so I just wanted to just say, first of all, thank you for laying a good foundation uh, because of you opening doors and not to sound too overly uh, complimentary of you, but because of your your roadmap that you laid. I went on to write books and to record. All these were uh, because in the wings I was watching great leadership and watching a great pastor. And any son of a ministry wants to the affection of his pastor, but he also wants to try to duplicate the yeah. things that were laid out for him. And you laid that foundation in always challenging us yeah. to study, to be students of the word. Yeah. Um, and then not only that, you invested in our ministries. Yeah. And so I'm just so excited to be a part of the conference and be a part of this great church. You know, although I was gone for many years pastoring in another city in Columbus, Ohio, uh, and then planting a church, uh, New Wine Church International, uh, all that came from watching and learning and also you exposing us to what expository preaching is all about. So I'm more delighted to be here with you than you here with me. So thank you for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Tell me what your what are your goals, where you're going, where you're headed. What are you trying to do now with your new ministry that you have here in the city? Well, that's a great question. One of the things, the caveats that I see sometimes missing in the church is uh, our sometimes lack of evangelism, yeah. aggressive evangelism. Um, being a great pulpitarian is something that has come naturally from watching you. Yeah. And that's something that, not saying that we've mastered it, yeah. but it's something that we're constantly working on. Yeah. But we should never lose it for the one-on-one, -on -one, the, the winning of the souls and leading people to Christ individually. Yeah. And so one of the things, that the goal, when you say, what are my goals? One of them is to make sure that I'm constantly perpetuating the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in a way where the kingdom agenda yeah. overrides my own agenda. Yeah. There was a time in my ministry, and if I can be very honest, honest with you, that um, I wanted to do everything that I saw done before me. Yeah. And there was nothing wrong with that model. But in most cases, uh, we sometimes get, get caught up in our ambition yeah. instead of chasing our assignment. Yeah, and yeah. when that happens, uh, it's almost like the word. Uh, uh, when you taught me word study, I never will forget it. Years ago, you sat down with me and you showed me yeah. on the computer word study. Yeah. I learned something about the languages. Yeah, and the word uh, uh, mediocre in Latin means halfway up the mountain. Yeah, and yeah. I never wanted a ministry that was just halfway up the mountain. Yeah. So what I had to do was go back and rechallenge myself mm -hmm. through expository preaching, through a conferences that you. I never will forget it. Years ago, and you may not remember this. At my first church in Mississippi, yeah. uh, I wanted I, had, I got my little anniversary money, and I was so excited it wasn't that much. And you were like, mm -mm, "You're not buying no suits, not buying none of that. We're going to this conference. You're gonna learn." And I'm so glad yeah. that you thought enough of me to challenge me yeah. to broaden my horizons, yeah. not just be a preacher who's just a good storyteller, yeah. but to expose the word and a God where we don't leave people halfway up the mountain. Exactly. And so that's one of the benefits and privileges and. In my ministry, just constantly challenging myself to make sure that I'm doing um, a very aggressive evangelism. And yeah. that means just sharing Christ. It's wonderful. So, in other words, you're doing the best you can uh, to win soul, not rustled cattle. That's it. That's okay. it. Not trying to get people from other churches to come join your church. Exactly. But to find the lost, those that are unsaved, yes, to be a part of the ministry. Fantastic. That's great, great. Tell me about your expository preaching. How do you like it? Give me a couple words, if you can, uh, on expository preaching. For instance, uh, explain this, if you will, in Romans 8, uh, 37. It said we're more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Through him that love us. Explain that, if you will. Well, you know, the Bible, uh, as you've taught us so many over the years, is not written in English. It was written in Latin, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Yeah. And when you take it, the language and you uncover the words, yeah. just for instance, the, the word that you just used, more than a conqueror, yeah. it's a compound Greek word. Yeah. Uh, just so I can just tell the basis of it, because sitting with 
with you is kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I dare not want to seem hoop like the, hoop on the Kyle is the hoop on the Kyle exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hoopo means under, Nakayo means to carry. Yeah. At the root of the base, and so when you look at the word more than a conqueror, it simply means in those days you have to know culture, and in those days uh, when they would have what we would call our Olympic Games, yeah. uh, one of their challenges was scaling a mountain. And what they would do is if you would scale the mountain naturally, then they would just say you were a conqueror. Yeah. But if you were asked to be weighted down with something heavy and you still made it to the peak of the mountain, they would call you more than a conqueror. Yeah. And that's kind of how this Christian race is. You yeah. know, some people, they make it seem so easy. But the truth of the matter is that just because you serve the, the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there are some times where some stuff is going to weigh you down. Yeah. And when you make it to the peak, in spite of all of your challenges and all of the changes that we go through, just living life, yeah. uh, being saved and being a Christian is no guarantee to an easy slate. It means that when you're weighted down, you're more than a conqueror. And and that's one of the things that I love about the languages. When you yeah. taught me years ago, I never will forget it, when you would come run revival for me in Columbus, Ohio, yeah. and, and literally the church would be jam-packed of people yeah. waiting to watch you in action yeah. as you unpack the Word of God. Yeah. And that's one of the beauties of expository preaching. Yeah. And I say this, Pastor, to our audience, to your audience, yeah. uh, every not only preacher, but every person. Yeah. You'll always benefit from a conference like uh, Relighting the Lighthouse, yeah. the conference that Dr. Ray is putting on, because this is not just about the languages and learning the caveats of Scripture. This is about helping you to become a better Christian. Yeah. I know a lot of Christians who aren't necessarily good people. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. and I know some preachers and pastors who are great pastors and yeah. preachers, but not necessarily good people. Yeah. But I understand, like myself, we're all in a process. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just want to challenge your listening audience, if I may, yeah. uh, that they need to get to the conference. I know that's not yeah. what we were talking about initially, yeah. Yeah. but I just had to say that because it's conferences like the uh, the Frank Ray Conference, the Expository yeah. Preaching and Teaching Conference that enlightens us, it educates us, it empowers us yeah. to be the best we can be. We owe that to God. Yeah, we owe it to Him. We do. Yes. We owe it. To him. There are three different approaches to any passage in the Bible, and I said often someone will get it sooner or later, and that's topical yes, sir. Yes, sir. teaching, textual teaching, and expository uh, yes, teaching. Sir. Topical teaching is when you think of a subject you like, and then you go to the scripture to find a text to match your subject. Yes, sir. Uh, the tragedy of that is that most of us, when we study the Bible, we come to the Bible with baggage already with us. In other words, we come with preconceived ideas yes. as to what we think the passage is saying even before we, we examine the passage. Yes, and we pick those preconceived ideas up based upon stuff we heard. Mm -hmm. We took the word of somebody just because they said it and thought that's what the Bible said. And many times what you read in the Bible that you see it before you is not really what you really see. Exactly. You, know, you think you see it, but it's not there until you examine the passage, examine the text, and see, look at the culture of the text, exactly. find out why the pensman wrote what he wrote, for instance, what he wrote. You yes, know, sir. Uh, there are many times that you can see a passage in the Corinthian, and the Bible has reference to the Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, whenever you see the spirit there, it has reference to the spirit of man. Yes, sir. Uh, but then when you look at the spirit in the book of Acts, same word, it has reference to the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And then when you see the word spirit in, in 1 Timothy, chapter, I mean 1 uh, Peter chapter 3 verse 19, the Bible says Jesus went and preached to the spirits. He had reference to the demonic world. Exactly. Then you can see the same spirit but has reference to different things until you examine the text and see what the pensman had in mind when he penned the text and when you see what he had in mind you can understand the text better. Yes, and so that's, that's, text, that's topical teaching which can be dangerous but many people deal with topical lessons and topical sermons because we have our own ideas and we try to get the Bible to prove what we believe, yes, that yes. which can be dangerous or detrimental. And uh, I'm a fearful of that because I have to stand before God. Yes, sir. And what you say, it multiplies. When you say it, someone else picked up what you said. They run with it. 
Someone else picked up what they said, run with it. Someone else picked up what they said. Before long, you have a whole group of people headed in the wrong direction exactly. because of what one person said. And all of that will fall back at your feet. You yes, have sir. to give an account of it. And then there's textual preaching, which is always good preaching if you just deal with the text. But too many times we grab a text in Genesis and bump it up to a text in Revelation <laughs> to try to prove our point exactly. as to what we're saying. <laughs> And it could have two different meanings, a total different meanings. Yes, we try to prove it by what we see here. Then we go somewhere else and prove it. And that's not what the Bible is saying in that particular passage. Yes, but then there's always expository preaching. That's what will take place at the conference. We try to deliberately bring in scholars uh, that will be here in the conference that will deal yes. with expository preaching. We have preachers and we have scholars that will deal with syntax, voice, neuter, word study, all of those things. And then we have some that will be here that have already put it together and will display it yes, sir. for us. Yes, sir. Uh, there are gifts in the Bible. There's a gift called the gift of wisdom. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a gift called the gift of knowledge. The person with the gift of wisdom, God has given them the ability to go into the word and abstract the word and bring it to the surface, things that you will never see. Exactly. Because God has gifted them with the gift of wisdom. But then he has given the person the gift of knowledge to have enough sense to take what the person of gift of wisdom mm -hmm. has unpacked and take yes, it and run with it. Yes, sir. And at the end of the day, God will bless both because he had gifted them yes, in different areas. And so it's important that we learn how to deal with it from the expository. Expository preaching, first of all, it deal with interpretation. You find out what the Bible is saying. Yes. If we ever just discover what it's saying, <laughs> and then there is uh, investigation, you find out what it means. Yes, sir. And then there's application, you find out how you fit into the text. Yes. Now, of course, when you deal with uh, this this matter of investigation, always like watching uh, Perry Mason and yes. Matlock and movies like that, uh, where they spend fifty minutes doing investigation yes, yes, and it don't take but 10 minutes for application Yes, sir. Uh, and so when a preacher spend time doing investigation it don't take him long to apply it once he get there Exactly. and so those are things that are very important we thank you so much we're going to pause just for a moment but we thank you so much uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Barnes, Bishop Barnes for, for just being here we got some more coming you stay tuned we'll be right back God bless you. Listen, I am so delighted again just to share just a word with you about what is getting ready to take place in the city of Memphis. It is our 13th year that we will be celebrating this expository preaching church growth enhancement conference that will take place here on the campus of the New Salem Church family. We have so many guests that will be coming, sharing with us, and just any one of these guests will be enough for us to come and to stay all the week. Listen at some of the people that will be here. Dr. Jasper Williams from Atlanta, Georgia will be here. Uh, Dr. Arthur Jackson from Miami, Florida. Dr. Jamal Bryant will be here. Of course, Dr. Tellis Chapman will be here. John Adolph will be here. Uh, Torlin Morgan will be here. And then we're going to honor the president of a National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated, Dr. Jerry Young, we're excited about what God is getting ready to do here on this spot of ground. My goodness, I can't wait. Circle your calendar for that time. You can call our church and register now, 1-800-375-4007. Or go to GodIsGoodMinistry.net. You can register now for this awesome situation. Be blessed. Pastor Ray, as everybody knows, is awesome, and all the speakers are wonderful, and just come, 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 join us, and you will be blessed. Well, bless you again. Let me say thank you so much, audience, for sticking with us. We are, we are so honored and delighted 
We have one of God's great preachers, great ambassadors. I have uh, recommended this preacher uh, in a number of places across the country to preach. He's certainly not let me down the places that I've sent him to share the word of God. Now he's recommending me. He's going so many places until he tell them, y'all think about my pops here once in a while. <laughs> so I appreciate uh, Bishop Barnes for what he has done. I have had a kinship with him uh, all of his life. I thank him for still being a wonderful brother in the Lord. He's, he's a very young man, uh, has his whole life before him, but he is preparing himself. Uh, he's a student of the word, and I thank God for Bishop. Bishop, again, I'm so delighted to have you to be here and to sit here with us, yes. and so we can share just a word or two. I've, I watch you uh, in your early years of preaching, and most of my sons, uh, when they first started preaching, they used the manuscript. Yes, sir. Uh, and I've tried to teach our sons against using the script. Yes. Uh, I believe that if you cannot remember the sermon from the office to the pulpit, uh, then your parishioners will not remember it from the pew's home. Exactly. And so I've tried to. Now, there are those, and, and I'm certainly not minimizing anybody. If a person has to use one, yes. then they must use it. Uh, it costs you to be uh, almost a bookworm. You have to be very studious. You have to be a slave when it comes to reading and studying. You have to spend many hours. And one while I was spending yes. about 40 hours a week yes, uh, in preparation for, for a sermon. And I promised God that if he allowed me to leave my public job uh, 39 years ago, yes. uh, that I would give him the same time in preparation that he was giving me to work on a public job. And it has paid off for me. It's been very successful. So tell me about that. How are you handling, how are you dealing with your script and, and things of that nature? How are you preparing yourself? Well, I remember years ago, Pastor Ray, you sharing with us that a man that mishandled the word of God yeah. over a congregation is just as dangerous as someone walking into a McDonald's yeah. with an automatic weapon and opening up fire. Yeah. It's going to kill a lot of innocent people. Yeah. Yeah. And taking that in mind as a base or a launching pad to segue into what you just asked me, one of the things that has blessed me through expository preaching is the ability of spending that quality time with God. Yeah. As you said, uh, letting it get inside of us, yeah. uh, not just in memory, but also in word and deed. Yeah. Um, expository preaching, exposing the text. Uh, you know, there's a difference between eisegesis and exegesis, and yeah. those terms shouldn't throw us. We shouldn't be afraid of them. Yeah. Uh, we don't just want to be allegorical and just tell stories. We want to make the text live. Yeah. We have to make it relevant. And one of the things that expository preaching does is it helps us take the word of God and place it right in the lap yeah. of what the person in the audience is dealing with. Yeah. And so in order to refine one's gift, yeah. you have to spend time with the word. A preacher who won't study yeah. or a person that's a, a Sunday school teacher, a lay person, yeah. a person who's helping their pastor in the ministry. Yeah. You have to apply yourself to study. The Bible yeah. talks about study to yeah. show thyself approved unto God. Yeah. Right. And that and, need, then, and you'll be a workman that needeth not be made ashamed. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, if I may say, and this is not an insult, a lot of what's going on now in the pulpit is not preaching. Yeah, exactly. Some of it is, is entertainment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, culturally, yeah. culturally, we love yeah. good music, we love good singing, but yeah. at the end of the day, you're going to have to have the word. Yeah. Uh, one of your catchphrases, if I may just uh, yeah. say years ago, and you, I, w I never will forget it, you would say that preaching will draw you out of the world yeah. and teaching will draw the world out of you. Exactly. And expository preaching does that. You mentioned before the break uh, talking about knowledge and wisdom yeah. and how those are gifts. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are two types. There's awanas knowledge, yeah. and then there's kawanas knowledge. Yeah. Kawanas is when you know because someone taught you. Yeah, exactly. Awanas is when you know but you don't know how you know. It's yeah. like a, it's like what we would call mother wit. It's just yeah. internal. I believe it's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, because whenever you take the word of God and you let his super fall on your natural, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah. I believe one of the misnomers mm -hmm. um, 
the misnomers that happens that where things get lost in translation, uh -huh. uh, not just with the languages, but even from the pulpit to the pew, mm -hmm. is when people don't feel that we're human. They yeah. feel like we don't go through. They see us yeah. dressed up, but they don't know sometimes we go to the pulpit yeah. with our own burdens. We're exactly. bleeding while leading. That's right. And so... Uh, one of the, the biggest joys I've gotten out of expository preaching yeah. is that I'm not just preaching to my audience. Yeah. I'm living the sermon. Yeah, exactly. I'm living the exactly. sermon. It applies to my own life That's exactly and right. through those life experiences, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which leads me in, you know, I wrote a book. Yeah. And you, uh, you've allowed me and afforded me the privilege yeah. uh, to come to the conference and yeah. teach yeah. and work with women. Yeah. And uh, I wrote a book. Uh, the book is for women. It's called Every Woman oh. Needs to Know Her Cup Size. Cup yeah. is an acronym, yeah. meaning uh, calling her uniqueness and her purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all biblically, ba biblically based. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten a lot of compliments yeah. Yeah. Uh, from the book and a lot of even a pastor uh, who's, who, who attends the Frank Ray Conference yeah. Yeah. from Mississippi. Mississippi, who I preached for some weeks ago, called me mm -hmm. and said, man, I've been reading your book, although I gave it to his wife. Uh -huh. He says, and man, I see your pastor's voice yeah, yeah. peeping through the pharaohs of the page. Yeah, yeah. And that's a compliment for yeah, me. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, 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 thank I cannot uh, say I'm a true son and not have some of your DNA <laughs> in my work. Even, you know, when yeah. people call me bishop, I think it's kind of become out of habit. Yeah. I'm a pastor, but even that's yeah. a learning lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the word bishop, we, not, we shouldn't be afraid of these words. Yeah. Expository right. preaching yeah. teaches us that the word bishop, uh, episcopos. Yeah, huh. Epi means over. Scopos yeah. means to see or sight. Yeah, yeah. So a bishop is just one that has oversight yeah. over not maybe just one church, but several churches. Yeah. And so anything to expand mm -hmm. the kingdom agenda, yeah. uh, I believe uh, because you recommended me to preach in so yeah. many different settings, as you yeah. mentioned earlier, yeah. I've got a chance to preach before thousands of people in Texas, yeah. California. Yeah. These were all because of doors yeah. that the Lord and the Holy Spirit allowed you to trust me yeah. to open those doors so that I could walk in them yeah. and expository preaching yeah. is one of the keys yeah. that has, has helped me to stand in some of those places yeah. and so I want to just first of all say I'm so grateful Thank for you. the Thank opportunities you. now people know me yeah. in places because of the doors that you open on YouTube yeah. uh, a lot of people talk about those sermons yeah. where well, yeah. that illustration portion of me yeah. came from you teaching me and showing yeah. me yeah. how to make the text live exactly. and so now people walk up say, oh, you're Superman. Oh, you're yeah. the one that took off your clothes. Uh, you know, and, and, it, and it, it used to make me cringe. Yeah, but yeah. now yeah. I can say that you've given me a platform. Yeah. yeah. And I'll forever be grateful. You've sat down at dinner tables with me yeah. and invested in my ministry. I'll yeah. never forget that. Yeah. And that's why I challenge preachers yeah. as well as lay people. Yeah. Register for the conference. You yeah. want to be a part of what's going on in New Salem, July 6th through the 9th. You don't want to miss it. Yeah. This is going to be one of the most life-changing moments, yeah. one of the most pivotal moments yeah. of a life of a believer yeah. if you get to this conference. I'm telling you, your life will be bettered. Yeah. Take off work. This is already the holiday season. Yeah. Take off work if you can. Don't miss the classes yeah. because there's something at this conference yeah. that's going to enrich your life. Yeah, yeah. For you, and I want to say to our audience again, we thank you so much. I know this is a different type of of telecast that you're viewing but we thank you for sitting with us i know that you have been blessed uh, while listening to this uh telecast today a matter of fact uh it will be available for you if you want to order this telecast audio or or video we'll make sure that you get a copy of this it will be a blessing to you but by all means Please register as soon as you can for the conference. Uh, you can call our church office, 1-800-375-4007. Or you can write to the God is Good Ministry, uh, 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, zip 38114. Or you can visit us online, just godisgoodministry.net. We thank you so much. God bless you. I have enjoyed every bit of this. Thank you so much, Bishop, for sitting with us. Be blessed. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir.